Energy was the best performing sector today, boosted as oil prices continue to rise amid the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Joining us now is Karen Carniel Tambor, Bridgewater Head of Investment Research. Karen, it's great to talk to you. Since you guys at Bridgewater have, in, have digested all of the tough sanctions on Russia over the weekend, what, what ultimately do you think is going to be the, the best way for investors to tackle this issue? I think commodities are really important for investors right now because you can get new geopolitical armed conflicts into different environments in terms of what the commodity market is like. Right now, what's happening in the Ukraine is happening into commodity markets. They were already wrestling with very tight conditions, very low inventory, very weak supply growth, underinvestment. And that means that it's a situation that's sort of ripe for disruption, that any small amount of supply disruption can cause really big upside moves in prices. And we don't know what's still ahead of us. We do know that there's a lot of infrastructure that is is critical to you know produce and move commodities, whether that's energy and food stuff is important too, that it is in harm's way as long as this war will last. And we know that in past periods where we saw a tight energy market, very small supply disruptions could cause big moves. For example, in 2011, when you had you know the Gaddafi regime in Libya um, go under, maybe 1% of the market went out, and yet you saw oil prices move radically higher because the market was so tight. The market today, at least as tight as it was in that period. So are you saying we have not yet seen the bulk of the energy price? A lot of these commodities have already moved so much. Well, I think for investors, first, this is a protection. This is a protection against what could happen, the fact that you still could get big moves. The second is you still have very, very, very tight inventories, very, very tight supplies, and you still have markets that are actually still priced to have declines. So today's prices are still elevated relative to future prices. So if you basically think in real terms and compare buying a commodity to buying another asset, this is an asset that's actually still not priced to depreciate the way your other assets are going to depreciate with inflation. Uh, Karen, when it comes to energy in particular, uh, right now, of course, the sector is benefiting from the fact that there has been uh, a hesitance on the part of producers to invest more, to actually get supplies uh, moving much quickly. Are we at risk that that behavior is going to change? I mean, it has in every other cycle. It absolutely should, and I'm sure it will. The reality is, though, that outside of U.S. shale, most producers would take a long time to materially bring supply online. And so you have U.S. shale is in this unique position where those are some of the only oil that can come online very, very quickly. With OPEC, you've had so much underinvestment that a lot of members can't even raise supply to meet their current quotas because they've underinvested so much. So higher prices absolutely will do their job, will give the signal that now is the time to invest. But you're going to get a very tough time relieving that quickly as long as an expansion lasts. I would also add that it's not only oil. Food is an important um, complex of commodities for investors to also look at because Russia is a major exporter of wheat. Ukraine's a ma major exporter of wheat and corn. And when you basically look across wheat, corn, soybeans, they're somewhat interchangeable. You know, you can basically feed your animals corn or wheat, depending on what you want to feed them. And you have very, very, very low inventories across all three with a lot of risk of disruption. And in terms of the portfolio impact of, of allocating toward commodities, where would you say it should come out of? Is it, should it be, you know, whatever you have in fixed income because it's at risk of inflation, go toward commodities, or is it, uh, you know, in place of something else? Well, you know, from a risk perspective, it's much riskier to hold an outright commodity allocation than a fixed income allocation. So if you do that, you're going to end up with an overall riskier portfolio, which may or may not be appropriate mm -hmm. given your goals. For some investors, literally moving out of equities to some extent into commodities could actually be the right move because risk premiums look like some of the best they've been on commodities in many years, and you still get upside growth exposure, which you're relying on in equities. Um, either way, I would expect investors to step back and basically say, where is my inflation protection? Where do I do well if there are major disruptions and inflation is much stronger than anticipated? And if before the situation with Russia, it was more a demand than a supply story, slowly supply issues were easing, but you had very, very strong demand outpacing supply. Now you have a major geopolitical issue that could cause supply surprises that we're not going to know when they're going to come. It depends exactly how the fighting goes. Good time for inflation protection.